Me and my wife went to a longevity clinic in India at a five-star hotel to go through a week of advanced medical tests, scans and therapies. All of that for only one third of the price you'd get in the US or Europe. In this video, we're going to share our experiences and go through some of our results. If you want to join me at the next retreat, then check out the link in the description. We're going to maybe start with uh, how did we get here and, um, you know, what were our first days here like? Yeah, so we started with... Uh with a like, very good breakfast, so just recovering from the travels. And I think the second day we started the, the examinations, mm -hmm. which included 180 biomarkers, testing all the vitamins, um, testing organ functions, the most important biomarkers for organs, testing minerals in the blood and liver health, yeah. Thyroid health, everything. So pretty much uh, looking at your inner health with uh, all this, you know, over a hundred uh, different uh, blood markers. And we can maybe, you know, we got our own reports as well. This is my third time being here, Inca's the second time. And uh, we can, you know, compare our results of uh, what it was last year when we came and what it's uh, now. Overall, you know, both of our results uh, improved. So <laughs> we're both happy about that. And uh, all the like relevant biomarkers um, improved, at least for me. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of like improvements in uh, just these uh, important biomarkers. And I can maybe perhaps go through a few of them. We can go through a few of them together. Yeah. So what was it like your, these uh, blood sugar markers, like, you know, blood sugar is like, quite important for overall health. Yeah, so blood sugar improved. So I've been with quite low carb diet recently, and my HbA1c, so the average blood sugar within a few months period was 5.2, It reached a good one, but also my ketones were elevated uh, to 0 0.6, which was a nice finding. Mm. Mm. And uh, what was your like insulin levels? Uh, 3.4. Mm. Yeah, that's a good level and for my own uh, blood sugar markers as well my hemoglobin a1c was five uh, percent fasting blood sugar was 90. Uh, i also had uh, a small amount of blood ketones 0 0.39 uh, despite meaning uh, quite a lot of carbohydrates and my insulin was also 2.9 uh, which is a uh, another great result and my c-peptide was 1.08 which is a great result and uh, moving down the list liver function so my liver function was also all green. So all over there were in the like optimal ranges. And uh, yeah, I had no like issues with that. What about you? Yeah, so basically from the last time, I really wanted to improve my iron levels because last time I got a result that my iron and my ferritin were low. And now they are both normal. They are very good. So I'm happy about that. Um, overall, like there is... It it was a lot of improvement from last time because I knew what to focus on. So I really actually tried focusing on the iron and then the blood sugar. Yeah. Blood sugar thing and they were improving. Was my goal to improve was my homocysteine levels. So last time there were 12, which is a bit uh, higher than would be optimal. And uh, this time I got it below 10, so 9, uh, which uh, is a good improvement and uh, it's a much better result. So I'm happy with that result. And uh, another thing that improved for me was my lipids. So my cholesterol and ApoB levels were uh, both or they all improved. So my LDL last time was like 95. This time it's 76, which is a, a significant improvement. My HDL is pretty much the same. My triglycerides also the same uh, at uh, 50. And my ApoB uh, dropped as well to 61 which uh, is, is very good. Uh, last time it was maybe 73, so it's not a huge difference, but still. And lastly, my HSCRP, so inflammation marker, also improved a very small amount. So last time it was 0 0.2, this time it was 0 0.16. So that's uh, a little bit lower, and uh, but not like a huge uh, difference. One thing that we both have was our T3 thyroid marker was a bit lower. Mm. And uh, you've uh, had it pretty much all your life, like a lower thyroid. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's probably because of uh, weight loss. So I've lost quite a lot of uh, weight as well over the last uh, three 
uh, three months or so. And uh, it's not actually just weight, it's um, only fat, <laughs> because we need the DEXA scan as well, which we can shift to that uh, DEXA scan to monitor your body composition. Yeah. And One of my probably favorite things to monitor over time, because to really know what you are getting when you lose weight or gain weight, um, it's only it only makes sense when you look at the DEXA scan because you know if it's fat or muscle that you have either built or lost. Yeah, yeah, or, or bone, bone as well. Yeah, you don't want to lose like muscle and bone mass. You want to lose fat mass primarily, and this is what actually I achieved pretty much myself that I lost about. Uh, Four kilos, this is what the test says, I've lost since November four kilos and all of it has been fat. <laughs> so I actually built a little bit of muscle mass. I've gained 0 0.2 kilograms in my appendicular lean mass, so the ma muscle mass in the arms and legs. So I've actually gained muscle, you know, 0 0.2 kilograms <laughs> uh, while losing four kilograms of fat, uh, pure fat, which is, you know, amazing result. And uh, this also is reflected by my visceral fat amount which in November was 350 grams, which is already like a low amount, kind of, it's not uh, anything uh, like above normal. It's already like good and optimal, but this time it was a 54. So I've lost 300 grams of visceral fat. <laughs> so I've like, uh, yeah, had a very positive change in my body composition over this uh, time period and mostly coming from fat loss and uh, directly fat loss and visceral fat loss. What about yours? Well, I have very similar than yours, but smaller changes. So I did lose two kilo kilograms of total body weight, which was mainly body fat. And I did gain some muscle. So I'm mm. quite happy about that. You've also gained, yeah, like 0 0.2 kilograms of uh, muscle in the legs and arms. Mm. And... Uh, yeah, that's a good, good result. And the bone mass did improve as well for you, right? Or it's the, the bone, bone mass is the same. Okay, for me, my bone mass increased by 0.1%. <laughs> so uh, my total lean mass is 77%, uh, my body, and uh, my bone mass is 4.5%. How did you, like, why did you do in between to achieve these results? Yeah, so my diet wasn't that different, interestingly. So I was eating like a relatively the same diet in November as I am now. I think the biggest thing was just losing weight. And that weight loss was uh, driven a lot by exercise. So I was doing a lot more uh, cardiovascular exercise. And uh, I was worried or thinking that because of I'm doing a lot more cardio and losing weight, I might lose muscle and uh, like have a negative result in my body composition change, but apparently it didn't happen. <laughs> so apparently the exercise, even though it was cardiovascular exercise, it still maintained my muscle tissue because I was doing it together with uh, resistance training at some days. And I was still eating like a higher protein intake, which maintains the muscle tissue. So even though I was doing a lot of cardio and losing weight, I didn't lose any muscle and actually built it, which is quite uh, surprising. One additional thing for the visceral fat, what I've noticed is actually, yeah, like green tea apparently can have a very good effect on the visceral fat. So uh, I've been drinking a lot of green tea for the past few months. Mm. And I think that might have a, you know effect on the visceral fat specifically. So uh, going from already good amounts to um, virtually zero in, in that sense. Where can you see the visceral fat? It's here, right? Mm. Yeah, I've also lost about 100 grams of visceral fat, which is good. You had 250, which is very good. So like a good, like a limit for visceral fat is like 500 grams. So you want to have the visceral fat below 500 grams. That's a good amount. So you were already 250 and now it's 140 grams. So that's already a positive change as well. Mm. So basically, I had a very similar pattern of change. I, I actually reduced a lot of heavy weight training and I reduced the weights at the gym and I started doing with the medium weight sort of longer reps and I'm doing 
lighter exercises, maybe a little bit longer, a bit more walking, and actually a bit more resting, mm. which seems to be very good for my body composition, as well as I ramped up the protein intake by a little bit. Yeah. So that helped. How much more were you eating? I was eating around 60 grams of protein. and In November, last time. Yeah, last time in the measurement. It might might have been lower lower even on some days. So that that was quite low protein, but I think around sixty. And now I'm eating between seventy and one hundred, depending on the day. Mm. Yeah. Most nice. often it falls somewhere to eighty grams of protein, eighty, ninety gram. So even with such a slight change to the amount of protein actually mm. made a big difference. Yeah, that's good. And uh, last time we did a lot more comprehensive like medical tests as well, like a full body MRI and some mm. scans, uh, liver scans and things like that. But uh, this time, so because we was already, we did it last year, so there's no point in doing that, you know, that frequently we'll wait like, a, you know, two more years, three more years to do those tests again. But yeah, like the blood test and a DEXA scan are those things will, yeah, like once a year or twice a year is a good you know, for us at least, it makes sense to do. Uh, for the average person, you know, maybe like a blood test once a year is a very good frequency to do, and maybe DEXA scan as well once a year if you're over the age of 40 and you're afraid of uh, this age-related muscle loss or uh, frailty. So, uh, yeah, it's at least good to know your setting point for these uh, things because it takes a long time to build bone density and uh, muscle mass. So if you're already finding out in your 50s that you have low muscle mass and low bone density, then you're at a, it's kind of much harder to change it or to improve it because you're catching it so late. So it's better to like maybe in your 30s to get a baseline to see, oh, I have normal muscle, I have normal bone density, I don't have like that much worry right now, I'll check back in 10 years or something like that. But yeah, if you, if you catch it too late with even like these other blood tests, like you catch the uh for example diabetes too late then it's going to be much harder for you to fix that and change those uh conditions that's true and also it's it's easier to make a program that suits your body the best when you have tested different kinds of programs already in your life getting these results changing a little bit of your routine see how your body changes um, you know what's going to be serving your body and your body composition the best. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's no single way to improve muscle mass or lose visceral fat. There are a few, like, commonalities and principles, but, yeah, you need to find, like, what works uh, for you. And uh, if you if you want to know if it has worked or if you if you want to know if your diet is working for you, then you need to measure your blood and you need to measure your body composition to know is this objectively working or not? Because subjectively, we are very bad at understanding our health, subjectively speaking. Like we can't understand what our blood sugar level is mm. just by how I feel <laughs> or what our cholesterol level is just by how I feel. And uh, bone density as well, like... You know, yeah, you might be more prone to breaking uh, bone, but, uh, you know, everyone does that at some point. Uh, so you don't know what your bone density actually is unless you measure it. And the same with, like, visceral fat. You can't see visceral fat unless you have a big belly, but, uh, but yeah, like, to know what your, what your, like, current situation. So, yeah, we didn't do the full body MRI, but it is included. The other people who came with us, uh, the, the clients, uh, they did do the full full uh, program with uh, all these different tests and scans and uh, things like VO2 max, uh, full body MRI, uh, liver scan, uh, ultrasound, echocardiogram, you know, eye tests. You did an eye test too for your I eyes. I did, yes. I was very happy about that too. Mm, yeah. Mm. What did it look like or how long did it take? It was perfect vision and... Um, I just wanted to see if there are any changes and why I get eye strain sometimes. And I got a prescription for eye drops and then um, reading classes when I get the eye strain, basically, mm. um, just for computer use, which is what I have done before as well. Mm. So I was just glad to know that there is no degradation in the vision. Yeah. 
Yeah, the clinic has eye doctor, ear, hearing doctor, uh, dentist, uh, physiotherapists. You know, they can help with posture and muscle aches and pains and mobility issues. And yeah, there's just so many of these different uh, professionals. Yeah, in regards to the posture analysis, actually, and the training, is that last time I found out that I have a little bit of like slouched mm. posture. <laughs> and I've been working on that. And my new new measurement shows that I have grown height. So basically, that's just my posture has improved and my yeah. spine has decompressed. So one centimeter, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. one, one to two centimeters, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the physiotherapists and the things like they also help to identify certain problems or like what is the root cause of a particular problem in your like physical pain or physical discomfort, mm. so to say. Yeah, one of the biggest benefits for me have been the cosmetologist and the skin analysis. So they can quantify your skin type with an AI-based tool. It looks at all layers of the skin and it look like uh, looks at all important markers of the skin, like is there dryness in the skin and which area of the skin has dryness? Are there invisible fine lines? In which case you know that this is the area that I need to work on on my skin. Um, is there hyperpigmentation? It's not always visible, but there might be something that you cannot see, hyperpigmentation. So maybe you need to protect from the sun better. And then based on that analysis, they do skin treatments. So this time I noticed that my skin had improved a lot. The, all the dryness had normalized. Uh, all the hyperpigmentation had reversed. Almost all the wrinkles had, or the fine lines had reversed. And um, it had tightened. Mm. And based on also the results, we decided to do a few of like treatments. We did some radio frequency. We did um, collagen boosting. We did hydrofacial to improve the moisture levels. Mm. And the skin analysis is good because sometimes the skin texture and the skin type changes based on the skin routines. Yeah. And that will give a good baseline on what kind of products are suitable for your skin condition at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I, I did the skin analysis as well and my skin had also improved. I apparently have more drier skin, maybe because of I'm doing the sauna quite often. Mm. and. Uh, some of the things like hyperpigmentation and you can't see it with your visible eyes that well, but the, uh, the scanner detects it, uh, you know, automatically and they can see, okay, you have some wrinkles here, fine lines here, you have some acne here, you have some, some of this um, oil, oiliness here and uh, those kind of things. And it detects all of that and you can see what the, you know, the regular eye can see. So yeah, my skin had improved as well slightly and mostly because of me paying attention to moisturization of the skin a bit more you know I never did anything about my skin in the past and I've just paid a, a bit attention to that over the last few months so it uh, has worked and then yeah they did also like some very treatment based on the results so they did like some of the hydration and uh, yeah they used some of this uh, skin tightener with this magnet i guess it's like a magnet yeah. that <laughs> it feels quite weird to have this magnet you know drag across your face and it like pull your skin like <laughs> but uh, but you see an instant yeah. lifting effect yeah and uh, immediately after i came from the treatment i saw that yeah my skin was very like soft or supple kind of yeah it looked like really good after that so yeah Definitely going to be doing that, you know, every time I'll come here and uh, it's kind of kind of cool and uh, you know, good for your skin health. Another thing worth mentioning is the uh, food here. So this hotel, the Lela Palace, it has three restaurants. It has a buffet, a Chinese restaurant and an Indian restaurant. And the food, they're all just <laughs> amazing. It's one of the best foods like, you know, I've ever eaten. And uh, there's a lot of different cuisines. You know, you have seafood, you have Indian food, uh, Chinese food, even like regular, you know, breakfast food. So uh, it's for like almost every taste. 
good desserts as well, like healthy desserts uh, with uh, no added sugars and fruits. So um, everyone's been loving the food. You know. Yeah, the food is definitely one of the best parts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because everything is modifiable. Everything that you feel like eating is either available or possible to order. Yeah, and uh, you and can... the dinners and the like the food moments are also super nice because we gather at the same time. Yeah, on most of the days, so you will meet the group, you will exchange ideas about your experience, maybe compare results, and you hear it's almost like a consultation in the <laughs> in the dinners as well. Yeah, so group you... discussion about their day and about the results. Those. So, like, yeah, what does this mean and. Uh, what should I do? Or yeah, it's just a kind of casual discussion about the program, and uh, people uh, love it as well. The they get a lot of you know so much information, which you know can sometimes be overwhelming. But uh, fortunate that there's so many of these uh, you know doctors and consultants consultants here as well that uh, just help to interpret all the results and uh, you know give actionable steps okay how do you improve this marker or what you need to do to um, see improvements so yeah it's a very um, good combo of this uh, like theoretical side but also the just pure practical side in terms of getting the results and then having like uh, actionable steps to do to improve those results and uh, the staff as well is just very I guess, generous and uh, helping and kind. They're always, you know, there to take you to the treatments, take you to the doc doc doctors, schedule the appointments, uh, let you know, well, you know, about uh, some uh, administrative stuff. And uh, yeah, just very helpful, very fast and, you know. They huge. really make you feel like at home here. It it can be quite new experience coming here, doing all treatments, getting all the results, and the staff are there all the time to support you. And if you if you are lacking something, or you need need information, or you want to know something, or you want to see if a treatment is available, usually everything is available. Then they will take care of it for you. Mm. And I like it because like everything is, it feels easy. In that sense, yeah, yeah, and everyone who's been here, they say that you know they'll come back next year or something like that they'll they'll keep coming back <laughs> once a year, and uh, that's because of the like just having this week where you do all the tests that you need and uh, get all the consultations that you need and get all the physiotherapy and all the things like that uh, that you need in one place in one go, very fast and conveniently. It's just a, I guess uh, something that you know, these people will uh, do value because uh, if you're doing it at your home country, then you might need to wait for a few weeks to get an appointment at your doctor. And and uh, if you go private, then it's going to cost a lot more. Um, and you need to do those things in different locations. You need to do the blood test here. You need to do the scans here. You need to do the consultations at other places. So you spend weeks and months going from doctor to doctor to get all this information whereas here you just come here you fly in they take you from the airport take you to the hotel you start the program you do the tests every day you get the consultations immediately you uh, meet the other people here you have a like relaxation you know vacation essentially in, in the hotel in this amazing hotel and uh yeah just feels like a vacation for for us as well and uh, for people I mean, the program is intense. It's like you, it is full days of testing and full days of consultations. Mm. But it's like the location is relaxing. The food is good. And there, there is a spa, there is a sauna, and then there is an opportunity to get massages and reflexology, which yeah. I've definitely used the opportunity um, for that to kind of wind down every now and then and yeah but it's also like exciting so you're not like yeah because you're getting all these tests and results like you're learning so much new things about your health mm -hmm. that it's like exciting like you're wow you know you know for us when we got these results like we were you know, very happy and excited about it but even in the first time we came here there were things that we needed to improve a few things 
uh, but it was yeah like just interesting and it didn't feel like you know you were worn out <laughs> in that sense mm. yeah so a lot of the things you can't do in uh, certain countries either or they're gonna be like super expensive so uh, for example in our country Estonia you can't do a DEXA scan maybe you can do a DEXA scan in some other countries like London like UK or Germany or US but again you might need to go through different locations and it's gonna be somewhat more difficult but here it's yeah just come here once a year will come obviously a bit more frequently but uh yeah just coming here and doing those tests for a much cheaper price is yeah just makes a lot of sense <laughs> at least for people who are yeah, interested in this yeah and for example things like intravenous vitamin treatment yeah it's not available everywhere hyperbaric oxygen it's not available er- anywhere yeah. um like or everywhere um neurofeedback is kind of like more advanced harder to find treatments uh, and wellness routines yeah packaged in a you know relatively short time period of a one week yeah yeah there is a lot to choose from yeah and you can adjust the program based on your recommended like re- requirements and uh, Wishes, goals desires yeah. yes so yeah definitely you know this this was our trip here to Iwo uh, this time we'll obviously come back um, in a few months and uh, yeah definitely if you're interested then check out the the link in the description where you can learn more about it mm-hmm.